everyone, and welcome back to the Georgia Aquarium's Deep Sea Learning here on our YouTube page. My name is Meggie, and today we are going to be talking about solutions to pollution, so things that are affecting our aquatic environments in a negative kind of way, and how you guys can reverse that and affect it in a positive way using the trash that you see in your lives every single day. We are also going to be using the Next Generation National Science Standards, MSS 3-3, to be talking about this subject. Pollution is a word that everybody's probably heard about in their everyday lives, but do you guys know what it means? Pollution is going to be something that is going to enter an environment that it's not supposed to be in and harm it in a negative way. And a lot of pollution is unfortunately human caused, which means that people like you and me, whether we know it or not, can be negatively infecting the oceans all the way far away from our homes. So today we're gonna to be talking about ocean pollution, specifically how humans can cause ocean pollution. So from factories near your homes or trash that you guys don't throw away responsibly, those things through runoff, which is when the rain comes down and pushes everything on the ground into a local river or a stream, and eventually all rivers and streams lead to the ocean. So a whole bunch of different kinds of pollutants like dirt, um, air pollution, or just grime in the general area can make its way into the ocean and negatively impact the animals that are there such as sea turtles. Some sea turtles love to prey upon jellyfish. And jellyfish kind of also look like a plastic bag that's floating through the water. So if you can picture a, the way that a jellyfish floats kind of like this and the way that a plastic bag would float in the water, it also looks like this. So that sea turtle might wind up getting confused and decide to prey upon the plastic bag instead, which isn't gonna be good for that animal's stomach. So p plastic bags being said, a lot of ocean pollution is going to come from plastics. And plastic is in pretty much everything that we use in our everyday, such as our clothes, the cups, the plates we use, forks and knives, um, I don't know, whatever you guys can think of, such as computers, TVs, furniture, everything that humans deal with on a daily basis has some semblance of plastic in it. Now, plastic always begins like this. Very, very small, if you shake it, it kind of sounds a little bit like a maraca because each of these tiny couple millimeters thick beads is going to be called a nurdle. And a nurdle is pre-production plastic, which means that these pieces of plastic will eventually go into a mold and heat melts it down and then it forms to that shape. So you can take these and you can turn them into a plastic cup. You can stretch them out and you can do a little bit of manufacturing magic and turn them into the clothes that you're wearing. So a lot of these nurdles are going to accidentally get broken open and end up into the ocean. Also, nurdles or plastics, once they're thrown away irresponsibly, do begin to decay just like everything else. So as you might see a mushroom help break down a tree branch, plastics are going to break down as well and they might wind up looking something like this. Now these are also nurdles that we have here, but this is just an example to show you guys just how small plastic can get inside of our ocean. So take a look at the screen that you guys are watching right now. We have something up here called the decomposition guessing game. And there's a lot of different kinds of items that you're looking at on the screen right now, such as a glass bottle, an apple core, a diaper, mittens, boxes, toilet papers, plastic water bottles, all those different kinds of things. I want you guys to pause the video here and take a couple of minutes to talk to your parents, your friends, whoever you might be with, to try to guess how long it takes these things to decompose inside the ocean once we've thrown them away. Now what I want you guys to do is look at the answers that we have put up for the decomposition guessing game on screen. So if you look at things that are, are organic, which means that they naturally come from the earth, such things like the apple core, that's going to take two months to decompose to the point where you don't recognize it as an apple core anymore, which is good. That's how long it's supposed to take things to decompose. Um, it leaves nutrients and it benefits the environment around it. You also have wool gloves, which take one to five years, which is still a long time, but wool is a natural thread that we can pull from sheep, which is again going to be an organic compound. But take a look at some things that are not organic, specifically that plastic bottle up there. 450 years is how long it's going to take that thing to break down beside the point that we can recognize it as a plastic bottle anymore. That's longer than me or you or anybody you know is gonna be alive on the planet Earth. And again, once that plastic bottle breaks down, it's going to turn into things like microplastics, very, very small, and it's gonna wind up again in the table salt that you guys are seeing on your tables for dinner every single day. 
Things also like that foam cup are gonna take 50 years, aluminum cans, 200 years, and disposable diapers also take 450 years. Long, long time. So things that are not natural, like things with plastics in them are gonna take a lot longer than organic compounds. So what can we do to help this problem? That's kind of a really big thing to get your head around. Throwing away one plastic water bottle takes 450 years to decompose. There are gonna be things that you guys can do to help stop the spread of pollution, to help stop um, the mass production of these plastics. And I'm gonna go over them with you right now. You guys might have heard about the three R's before. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. I'm gonna turn that three R's into four R's for you. And we're gonna put in front of reduce, reuse, and recycle, we're gonna put refuse. Refuse means I'm not gonna use it at all. So stop using single plastics. Don't buy plastic forks and knives and use a reusable water bottle instead of a plastic one-time use water bottle. There's also another couple of things you guys can do. It's called composting. With compost, you take your organic trash, such as that apple core, and you put it into a heap in your backyard, and as those things begin to decay, they turn into a natural fertilizing soil for your yards, and you guys can grow a small garden, maybe vegetables, flowers, whatever have you, that's going to be good for the environment, and that's gonna be an excellent way to use your trash as well. Now. Currently, because of the situation that we are in, we do have an at-home learning section on the Georgia Aquarium website that's going to be underneath programs and education. There is a link on that page where you guys can submit some artwork. So what I'm going to challenge everybody at home to do is to take recyclable items from around your house, such as plastic water bottles, aluminum foil, rubber bands, anything you guys can find that you might normally recycle or throw away, and turn it into a piece of art. It can be a sculpture, it can be glued together on a piece of paper, take a picture of that art for us and upload it to our website and we'll see if we can see you guys on our website. If you post it on social media, make sure you guys use hashtag Georgia Aquarium so we can find it and congratulate you on your excellent jobs. So thank you guys so much for watching Deep Sea Learning with the Georgia Aquarium. Once again, my name is Meggie and for all of you local Georgia teachers out there, we do have Georgia standards of excellence that have been covered. We are going to be using a fourth grade standard about the connections of ecosystems. Thank you guys so much for coming and we will see you again next time on Deep Sea Learning with the Georgia Aquarium. Bye.